So if you remember, a couple of weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, I mentioned uh, in the parish notices that the, uh, the website name had changed, the parish website name had changed very, very slightly. It used to be royaldocs.faith, and now it is royaldoc.faith. Uh, and that came about uh, because uh, the, uh, I, uh, I, lost, I didn't lose my credit card. I was, I was defrauded. The parish credit card got defrauded. So I had to uh, quickly change it. So I phoned the diocese, had the credit card changed, and, uh, and so we had a new number and everything. Uh, the only problem with that was that the website is paid for on like quarterly installments uh, to a domain name provider. And it just comes out automatically. And all of a sudden, obviously, that payment no longer went through. And so uh, when I went to check the website at the end of August, I'm like, where's it gone? It's disappeared. So I phoned up the provider and they said, well, you've, you've stopped paying. And then I remembered, silly me. So we renewed payments, uh, but they wouldn't give us the domain name back because someone else had, I don't know, nicked it in the meantime or something. So they said, what you have to do, you have to change the wording slightly. So we went with royaldoc.faith. But even that one letter's difference makes all the difference. Uh, it doesn't appear on Google anymore or not at the top of the list. So, um, so the next step was to do a little promotion drive. So awareness for the website would go up. And for that, uh, I used Facebook because you can, you can pay for uh, posts to be boost, boosted. Um, so uh, I did that and Facebook offers you, do you want to advertise it locally, regionally or nationally? And uh, always thinking big, I thought, well, let's just tell the whole country about the parish of Our Lady of Walsingham, and uh, soon will be a minor basilica soon, I'm sure. And um, so uh, it will be a headline, come and see the parish of Our Lady of Walsingham, check out our website. And uh, rather to my slight annoyance, uh, lots of people responded to it, but they were like, oh, I just love the shrine of Our Lady of Walsingham. Isn't it nice? Our Lady of Walsingham, pray for us. I'm like, great, but we're in East London. It's the Royal Docks. So even then, the message wasn't quite getting through. However, people were clicking on the website, traffic went up, so hopefully now it's something that people can use uh, again. Um, however, uh, while most of the comments, 99% of them were lovely, uh, there were one or two that were a bit, you know, they call it trolling, a bit trolly. Um, so people, because it was going to everyone, everyone who on Facebook was getting this message pop up on their feed, uh, every now and then someone will pop up and say, oh, this religion is a load of rubbish, Ugh, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I think that one, one, uh, one uh, person, perhaps of a Protestant persuasion, who was like, oh, stop worshipping Mary, and all that kind of thing. And uh, so I'd slyly delete them as soon as I saw them to, uh, to keep our good reputation. However, there was one comment that I've left up, and uh, because it struck me in a particular way, uh, in light of things which are happening in the world at the moment, and the fellow uh, commented, where was your good God when the 22 children in Mexico died in the earthquake recently? Where was your good God uh, for the victims of the hurricane? And I sort of stepped back and I thought, you know what? He's, he's actually got a point, hasn't he? You know, he has got a point. Where is God uh, in these situations? Where is the justice and mercy of God in those situations for the people who've suffered, for their families? We think of this happening in our midst. We, we talked about gang crime last week, didn't we? Six more acid attacks last night in Stratford. Where is, where is God in the midst of this? Where is his justice? Where is it being acted out? And it made me think of today's gospel because the workers who've been working all day, who've been putting in their shift, uh, are questioning the justice of God too, aren't they? Worked a 12 hour day for an agreed rate of one denarius a day, so a day's wage to feed the family. And what does God the Father do, the owner of the vineyard? He's going out at the third, the sixth, the ninth, and the eleventh hour to get more workers. Now, they probably thought, great, that's more hands to the pump, so we can do less work. But then the shock, when the Father pays the eleventh hour person as much as the one who's been working all day. Now, if, that was, like, if someone came into your job, uh, completely underqualified, did one twelfth of the work and got paid the same as you, how do you feel? Anyone feel good about that? So, oh, great, they're getting, oh, it's so nice that they share the same amount of money. It wouldn't work, would it? In the normal scheme of things, uh, it wouldn't work. But let's, let's, uh, let's, let's change worker to parishioner. So think of the 11th hour parishioner, the person who just walked in the door. Now, there are many of us here who've been serving in the parish for many, many years, worshipping, uh, doing all sorts of ministries, or just you know, being part of the parish family for a long, long time. And, uh, and for perhaps a person who comes in at the 11th hour to be given the priority, to be welcomed and given a place, pride of place, 
it might just be a little bit jarring, just, just a little bit. Um, I mean, it's the same for priests as well. Like, you know, I'm lucky, but I'm, I'm a young priest now. And uh, when I was an even younger priest, I came as a curate. And, you know, you, you, you roll into churches where the priest has been doing 40 years service. And obviously everyone's like, oh, a young priest, he's so young, and all that kind of thing. And, you know, the old guy's got to be thinking, hey, I've been doing 40 years service. What's going on? Okay? And, uh, and one day I'm going to be the old priest getting jealous of the young one. You know, it's going to happen. You know, it's an obstacle we have to surmount. But it can happen to us. It's human nature to think, well, you know, you know what, what about me? What about me? And that's what the workers think in today's gospel. What's God's response? It's a bit similar to his response to the son, the second son in the story of the prodigal son. You are sustained by me. The privilege, or rather it is a privilege to work in my vineyard, to labour in my vineyard. It is a privilege to share my house. Sustained day by day by the love that I provide you and by the mercy of my generosity. And he says, why be envious? Because I am generous. He appeals to us, as he does to the second son in the story of the prodigal son. Don't be jealous, but rather share in my work. Because that's what it means to be a labourer in the vineyard. Not someone who works for the father, but rather someone who collaborates with him to make more disciples of Jesus Christ. Because that's what the father's doing. He's constantly working to bring more people into his vineyard, not to get more hands to the pump for himself but more hands to the pump for people who don't yet know him, to share in his divine work. Let's think about this the other way around as well, because you know, it's all well and good for uh, you know, people to criticise our faith, but we don't know the stories behind that criticism. Maybe the person who made that comment on Facebook suffered an injustice at the hand of the church. People who act in God's name betray his trust, and so therefore, quite reasonably, he's walked away from the faith. You don't know. We don't know anything about the third or the sixth or the eleventh hour Christian which makes them far away from God in the first place, which causes them to distance themselves from God. They may have had a horrible time or a horrible experience of faith, or maybe they've suffered injustice in their life, be it abuse, adultery, or all kinds of things, the loss of a loved one. Maybe they've come to a point in their life where they've said, well, where is God in all of this? They might not be far away because, you know, that, because uh, out of malice, they might be far away out of pain, out of suffering. And what does God the Father do? What's his response? He goes out and finds them and says, please, come in. But the third, the sixth, the ninth, and the eleventh hour, welcome into my house of love. My door is open for you, and you, as soon as you walk in, have the same privileges as a son and daughter. A son and daughter. That is the mission as long labourers in the vineyard that we share with the Father. To open the door with the Father, to be that smiling face or that welcoming heart in whatever way our gifts dictate to us. And that is why in this third uh, week of three homilies on evangelisation, I'm going to mention one more time this week, uh, Alpha. Because that is what Alpha helps us to achieve as a parish. It's not an end in itself, it's a means to an end. It's a tool that we use, a means of welcoming other people into the kingdom of God's love. Because what is Alpha? Forget the content for a minute. It's dinner, it's table fellowship, it's friendship, it's love. Where people are welcomed in all their freedom to question, to search, and even to go into the depths of their pain in a safe environment so that they may see the loving face of God. But today, I'm not going to be the last word on it. I've just, uh, Mervyn is going to come up now, uh, having experienced Alpha himself, and share his testimony with us. Thank you. My name's Mervyn Jones, and I wanted to come and share with you my experiences of Alpha. To be honest, I didn't really want to attend Alpha, thinking it wasn't really the sort of thing for me. Preferring instead to stay at home and watch the football. After all, it was European night on Wednesdays. But my wife kept coming home from the first course that she attended, saying how much I would enjoy it and how wonderfully inspiring it was, especially the weekend session. Now, while not convinced, and with the lure of football still high on my agenda, I nonetheless reluctantly 
decided to give it a try. After all, what could I lose? If I found it wasn't for me, no one would be twisting my arm to stay or go back. But I have to tell you, from the very start, I was hooked. I found the heady mixture of sharing food, the film presentations, and no holds barred discussion where you can say what you like and no one's point of view is any more important than anybody else's. I found that very thought provoking. I'm not pretending it provided me with all the answers, any answers at all for that matter, but the shared experiences that others had similar feelings gave me heart and made me think a little more deeply about my faith. As a result, for example, I now get the grace of God. He loved us so much that he gave us his only son to save us from sin. Even when I've messed up or I feel all messed up inside me, I know that he loves me and that he's always there for me. Now for me, the difficult bit is living up to that as a sinner. Friendships was another essentially important and rather surprising element. I made some wonderful friendships through Alpha with people I used to see at Mass but didn't really talk to other than to say a passing hello as well as those who go to other Masses and churches and I found that inspiring. In his Joy of the Gospel Pope Francis encourages us to break from our tendencies to do things because that's the way we've always done them. He says, be bold and creative. The important thing is not to walk alone, but to rely on each other as brothers and sisters. <coughs> A family. So, for me, Alpha Alpha is bringing together bringing us all together as a family and I recommend it to you all and I look forward to sharing such experiences with you. Thank you and God bless. <laughs>